All right, it is one o'clock. All right, so uh, thanks everyone for attending today's sixth edition of our series of webinars. Um, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to attend. Uh, once again, my name is Scott Fliggy and I'm the National Sales Manager for BFT Americas. And with me today is Pablo Hernandez from Tech Support. Hello, hello. So uh, we've just asked to save the questions uh, for the end. Feel free and put those in the chat room and uh, we'll be sure to answer all those at the very end of the presentation. And then uh, once again, this will be recorded and added to our BFT, Amer BFT Americas YouTube channel uh, where we've done previous webinars going over a variety of products. Um, so I would just suggest uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you get the latest product updates. And today's presentation will be centered around the BFT Deimos Ultra slide gate operator. And we're gonna go over the features and benefits of the Deimos, uh, the connection, connection and wiring of the photo eyes, the control board programming, um, how to program by parting gates, and also how to connect the BFT Wi-Fi gateway, uh, which end users can use uh, their smartphone or an app to open, close, and monitor the gate instead of using like a remote. A uh, little bit of background about the BFT story. Uh, BFT is the fourth largest gate automation manufacturer worldwide, and we are part of Sanfi Systems, which is a billion dollar manufacturer in the home automation space, such as uh, shades, blinds, awnings, and screens. And more information on Sanfi can be found at sanfisystems.com. And BFT has had a presence in the United States since 1990, and our headquarters is based out of Schio, Italy, and that's about an hour north of Venice. And you can see uh, we have 20 different offices uh, spread throughout the world. Uh, just some quick images of our warehouse in Boynton Beach, Florida. Uh, it's a 44,000 square foot warehouse, fully stocked, ready to go. And in the center there, you can see our new training center. All right, so why BFT? Um, we specialize in swing gate automation, both electromechanical and hydraulic. And we've, uh, on our page, you can find information on the Kustos and Juno uh, operators, which have been posted. And we'll do another Juno webinar in the coming weeks. Uh, slide gate operators, which is what we're going to talk about today, specifically just the Deimos. Um, however, I do want to make you aware we have three other options out there. The Deimos is mainly a residential operator. However, there's an Aries uh, 1500 Ultra, which is for gates up to 3,300 pounds, 75 feet. Uh, the Icaro Ultra up to 4,400 pounds, and then the SP3500, which is a 230 volt three phase motor for up to 7,000 pounds. Uh, we have a full range of barriers. Uh, if you missed the webinar last week, it was about the BFT Maxima Ultra, which uh, we're very excited about. Um, so I would check that out. And then we also have full range of bollards, uh, cellular systems for both residential and commercial and cellular video intercoms. And then next week, uh, Roy Kennedy, our VP of Sales and Marketing, will go over pedestrian speed gates. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we do have technical support based in Florida, New York, and Ireland. And recently in March, we added an additional tech support representative. All right, so we'll jump into the Deimos slide gate operator. So this operator is UL listed and rated for slide gates up to 75 feet, 1300 pounds. Um, it's very important, all of the BFT slide gate automation kits are all rack and pinion. Um, and what's the value in that? It is quiet, it's safe, you can't cut it. It doesn't drag on the ground such as chain. It doesn't stretch or rust. So it's a nice clean install. And once again, the Deimos is used for residential use. It's a 24 volt motor with an integrated control board and receiver. So the image on the bottom there, everything is with inside that enclosure. Uh, so it's small and compact. Uh, it's got frontal screws on the covers, so it's easy to slide the cover on and off. It has magnetic limit switches, which are very reliable. A plug and play battery backup kit, 
that actually goes within that same casing and that will give you about an estimated 40 cycles if the power were to go out. It also has slow down on closing and then uh, Wi-Fi gateway compatible, which will show a video at the end on how that's connected and, and the different features you can do with that. And I'm gonna point this out. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there showing how the Deimos works and how small it is, but I just wanted to state the, the size of it. People are always amazed when I show this to installers of how small it is. So it's eight inches wide by 10 inches long. Uh, so it's very small and compact and powerful. So there's not a lot of airspace, like some of the, um, a lot of airspace with inside the motor, like some other brands that you might see out in the field. Uh, so it's a great solution if you have a tight fit area where they're trying to automate or if the customer doesn't want to see the operator. So just a couple things to keep in mind. And from here, I will hand it off to Pablo who will go in a little more depth about how it's programmed and how it works. Thank you so much, Scott, I appreciate it. Uh, just a little overview of the Deimos, more or less, just to show you what you're looking at when you have the cover off. Uh, you'll notice uh, your top line there, it is actually your, your embedded uh, bi-channel receiver. I uh, mean, you could program two different channels on the remote. Uh, let's say one for actually opening the gate and another one to use one of our yellow connections there as like an aux out. Uh, you can get about 63 remotes programmed on that receiver before needing to add an extra wired in receiver. Um, and it is a 24 volt motor uh, integrated with the control board is 24 volt operated. Uh, we'll point it out to you there so you see what you're looking at. And of course you have your magnetic limit switches, which is great for, you know, keeping everything enclosed inside so you don't have uh, any kind of water intrusion or bug intrusion. It makes it a little harder for them. Nope, All right. Good. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, my apologies. Here we go. And this is a, another basic look at you'll notice that we have a little cover, uh, you know, basically protecting the control board. Uh, it is easy to remove if needed. Um, and of course, uh, you'll see where you would actually bolt down your operator. And then of course, your, your easy lever uh, manual release. Uh, basically, it's uh, they all come with a number two key. You'd be able to turn that and basically have your gate, you know, manually release. So you're able to move it by hand uh, for any type of power outages or things like that. Uh, here is a quick overview of where you would want to actually put your operator um, in, in uh, according to where you have your, your gate or your, your sliding rack. Uh, so basically what you would do is, is you would measure 17 millimeters plus the size of your rack. So that would be, you know, once you get that measurement, that'll, that'll give you uh, your optimum space of where to actually install your operator. And of course, it does come with a mounting uh, base so you can have all your anchors set correctly. And of course, you know, you would always try your best to raise the operator, of course, using that base uh, to be about 25 millimeters above the ground. Uh, you know, keep it away from, you know, just being set down on a pad where, you know, you have sitting rod or, or sitting or running water, uh, things like that. Um, of course, here is a, a quick little uh, guide of how you would um, put two pieces of rack together. Believe it or not, I've had people question, you know, how to get that level. And, you know, all you would really need is another small third piece of rack to just when you butt them up against each other, your other rack would actually keep it nice and level. Uh, so you have smooth running on your operator, no little weird kinks uh, or hard spots for when the operator's moving. Uh, more or less, I'll go more in depth in a video, but this will let you know, uh, you know, it's easy programming. When you go through your quick setup, you could actually select right hand or left hand. Um, so, you know, you know, depending which side of the driveway your operator is installed, um, you know, no need to change any wiring. It's all quick programming. All right. And then more or less where your rack needs to be sitting on top of your pinion. A uh, quick little uh, piece of information here is actually, uh, I have a lot of people that, you know, do not, uh, for some reason, they just put the rack resting on your pinion, and you would not want to do that. You don't want to put any weight on the pinion. You'd actually, between the teeth of the pinion and your rack, you'd want to keep like a, like, let's say an eighth of an inch gap uh, between where the teeth meet inside, uh, because what that does is obviously keep your operator running optimum, 
and not putting any extra strain on the gear drive or anything like that inside the motor and give you a lot of long extended use. Most important part that I can point out in this entire presentation is right here. Of course, you all know about the UL, uh, the new UL certification, meaning we need a photo beam installed. Uh, yes, it is mandatory and we have to put it on there, but uh, BFT's way of doing it is we actually went with a tested route instead of the 10K route. So if you notice the little warning in the bottom right hand corner there, it says no 10K resistor needed. It will cause errors and the errors you will probably see is error 01 and error 04. Uh, and your operator won't move until you get this fixed. Uh, if you notice, there's a picture to the right and that is actually the color combination of how you would install the, the normal photo beams that come with our kits. It's the reflective kit. And they come pre-wired, you know, with blue, brown, white, black, and gray. And that photo there will show you exactly how it needs to be installed and which jumpers need to still be in place uh, to make sure this is running optimal. And of course, if you decide to go with a different route of photo beam, whether it be ours uh, or polarized or one that you would like to use, uh, it's also very important to follow this schematic on how to hook it up. Of course, your power going to 50 and 52, uh, your common going to 70, uh, your normally closed going to 72, and your normally open going to 73. Of course, you would remove the jumper that was initially on 72 uh, when you first opened up the operator. Uh, again, without this being installed correctly and you verifying that your beams are working correctly, you will not be able to get to the next step, which is uh, quick programming. Uh, I did, my Scott, Scott and myself, uh, we actually made a video because that's a lot easier to show people uh, than to talk about it. So here's a quick little run through of how to do your quick setup. Hello everyone, just going over the limit switches on how it needs to be positioned and to make sure this is done obviously before you try to run the operator. Um, so you'll notice this is one of your magnets and you have another one on the other side. They actually have an R and an L on them. And you have to make sure that your right hand, your right limit switch is to the right of the operator and your left limit switch is to the left of the operator. Now this is no matter where the operator's positioned, if it's on the left side of the driver or the right side of the driveway, uh, very important to make sure that you get the direction of those correct. Uh, and then last thing I need, want to show you is the limit switch. This is, this is the distance you're looking for between the sensor and the limit switch. So very important to try to get it as close as possible. Uh. All right, so that was just a quick little uh, tip before proceeding forward, because uh, if you have those backwards, of course, you'll get the error or you'll just push the gate right off the track. And that's not what we want to do. Uh, we want to make sure it stops uh, correctly where it needs to according to the limit switch. Uh, and here is another video uh, that we will actually go into quick programming completely. <laughs> 